Hey, John Egan here with Dreamfire Films. Today I'm going to show you how to make your Blender user interface more efficient and look awesome. Because as we all know, no guy gets more dates than the one with the coolest user interface. We're going to make the buttons easier to work with. We'll make it so you can select objects with the left mouse button like in most programs. We'll change the color from this light gray default one to this cool dark one. I'll show you how to change the font size and how to use your graphics card to render stuff. I'm using version 2.77a, but I've been going about this the same way for versions within the last few years. Go up to File, and then down to User Preferences, or use the hotkey Control alt u We're going to first go to the Interface tab and uncheck Python Tooltips. Now, Python is the programming language used for Blender, and the Python tooltips are these little descriptions just for programmers that come up under the normal description when you mouse over any button. So unless you're a programmer, it's really just something that gets in the way. Next, let's go up to the Input tab. You might have noticed that Blender wants you to select objects with the right mouse button, instead of the left mouse button like we're used to with most of the programs that we use. So I personally like to set this to left, over here on the left side of the preferences. I haven't found any problems with doing this so far, except that I can model and animate faster. Now for the fun part. Go up to the Themes tab and let's change the look of your interface. As you can see, they let you control every little detail about the interface, from the color of the buttons to the color of the borders of the buttons, to just about everything but it would be really time consuming to go in and mess with every little detail. So I just trust their sense of style on this one and I go to the presets. I really like the Ubuntu Ambience, which I think is referencing the layout of what Linux Ubuntu looks like. And this is perfect for me. I find it really easy to look at for hours on end. The one thing I don't like is the timeline down here at the bottom. Everything in it is just a little bit too dark to work with. So to easily fix that, we just have to go over here to the Timeline tab on the left, and we can just click on the Grid color, and I just simply move this brightness bar around a little bit. And as you can see, the grid at the bottom will brighten up. But it's still a little hard to see where you set the beginning and the ending of your timeline. So it'll say down here, Start and End, and that can be very important. When animating a scene, or just trying to work on or export a portion of a scene, so the last thing I do is click on the window background color. And even just by brightening up a tiny bit, you kind of increase the contrast down here so you can easily see where your timeline begins and ends. If you want to save this as one of the presets, just come over here next to the preset you just chose where there's a plus sign. Hit the plus sign. Just type in the name of your preset. Okay, next we're going to increase the font size of your Blender interface. Go up to the System tab and under General and DPI. Change it to whatever is comfortable for you and uh, your distance from your monitor. Sometimes I slouch back in my chair, so I turn this pretty high to 110. If I have to look at this monitor all day, I want to be comfortable doing it. And then we're going to set it so that when you render, you're using your graphics card instead of your CPU, if you have a compatible graphics card. When it comes to choosing the right graphics card to use with Blender, here's the Blender.org documentation on the subject, along with the very easy to remember URL. If you want to find this page, you're probably going to just have to search Blender.org or Google it. The bottom line with this is that if you're going to buy an NVIDIA card, you're going to want to buy one from the GTX 400 series and above. Just Google NVIDIA GTX and you'll see the options available. When it comes to AMD cards, you're going to want to buy something from the HD 7 XXX series. You know, the Risque series of graphics cards. Now, it's just anything from the HD 7000 and above series. But with these AMD cards, they also need to have GCN architecture. So be sure to do a lot of research on a card before buying one. Check out what other people are saying about it first. It can be no fun buying a card and then realizing it doesn't work with your stuff. Or it works with one program and maybe not another. You're probably going to want to spend at least $100 or $150 on a card. As you can see, there's some limitations on the GTX 400 and 500 series cards. It looks like it has to do with textures. But if you do have a compatible graphics card, go here under Compute Device, set it to CUDA. 
and you can click here and it will show you the name of your graphics card and maybe what other graphics cards you could choose. I don't really know because I only have one. And then down in the bottom left, hit Save User Settings. And then of course to use your GPU after you close this preferences box, go up to the top info bar where it says Blender Render, drop that down and select Cycles Render. Then on the right in the Scene tab, under Render and Device, just make sure that is set to GPU Compute. And you are now a badass Blender user. I'm giving away some free action scene visual effects and gun sound effects that you can get if you click the link on the left. And on the right is my in-depth epic After Effects muzzle flares tutorial. Like, subscribe, and comment if you want to see more stuff. Thanks everybody, catch you later.